Uh, polycythemia vera, actually, there is a lot of medical progress that was done and a lot was achieved in the last few years. Still, there are some unmet medical needs. First, in terms of quality of life and symptoms, even under standard classical cytoreductive therapy, even in patients defined as low risk. These are younger patients, patients who do not have thrombotic events, but we know today that you know quality of life and symptoms do not correlate with blood counts and they do not uh, uh, correlate with the risk of thrombosis. So actually this is the main unmet need because from a patient's perspective, we're dealing with a chronic disease and having a lot of ill-defined symptoms with a negative impact on quality of life is a major issue we have to attend to. And unfortunately, still, we are getting much better, as I said, but still, I think the perception of doctors is quite different than that, what patients feel. And we always or often feel that our patients are doing better than they actually feel. And also data have uh, shown that despite these symptoms and reduced quality of life, suboptimal responding patients are still kept on traditional treatments like hydroxyurea or are given no treatment. And I think this needs to be changed, especially in light of all the new drugs available, just like interferon alpha and droxolitinib in this context. The second unmet need is actually still the increased risk of thromboembolic events and I think one major takeaway home message is that we have in addition to treating with aspirin in addition to trying to keep the hematocrit below 45 percent which I think is quite established in PV we should pay a lot of attention to another risk factor for thrombosis namely cardiovascular risk factors these are elderly patients Cardiovascular risk factors are quite common and I always say a PV person is not just a hematocrit but again we have to look at the patient as a whole and pay more and more attention to cardiovascular risk factors because we know that the number of these risk factors in, with the increase of the number we will have less survival more thromboembotic effect and finally we have transformation to AML secondary myelofibrosis but I think with the newer treatments like roxolitinib and interferon we are now seeing some biomarker changes like improvement in the jack allele burden which might which might have some positive outcome on long term but we still have to learn